जय गिरिवर हरे जय यशोदा नंदना जय ब्रजन रंजन जय ब्रजन रंजन जय यशोदानंद जय ब्रजन रंजन जय ब्रजन रंजन जय यमुना तिरा बन चारे जय कुंज बिहारी जय यमुना तिरा बन चारे जय कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव जय कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव जय कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव जय कुंज बिहारी जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिब्राज का आचार्य अष्टोदरक से श्रीमद इस डिवाइन ग्रेशील भाई चरण अरविंद भक्ति वेदांत गोस्वामी महाराज प्रभुपाद की इस्कॉन बिबड़ संस्थापक आचार्य शिल प्रभुपाद की जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्राज गचार्य अष्टोदरक से श्रीमद इस डिवाइन ग्रेशील भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर प्रभुपाद की अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की नामाचार्य शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवा सदिगौर भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड श्री गिरि गोवर्धन की ब्रज भूमि श्री वृंदावन धाम की पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र श्री जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की नवद्वीप मायापुर धाम की गंगा माई जमुना माई की भक्ति देवी तुलसी महारानी की कलयुग पावन हरिनाम संकीर्तन की हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र की शील प्रभुपा ट्रांसनेटल बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की निताय गौर प्रेमानंदे ऑल ग्लोरिस्ट टू असेंबल डिबोटिस ऑल ग्लोरिस्ट टू असेंबल डिबोटिस All glories to assemble devotees. All glories, all glories, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम 
चोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तय मुदीर ये नष्ट प्रायु अभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठिकी कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमाराय गोविंदय नमो नम ज्ञानतिरंधस्ञाजनशलाकया चक्षुर्ोन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे वाछाकलपतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नम नमो महावदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय कृष्णा कृष्ण चैतन्य नाने गौरत्षे नम पंचतत्वात्मक भक्तस्वूप भक्ता भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्तशक्ति हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांत नमोस्तु ते कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद 
ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಒನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಏಟೀನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಎಂಟೈಟಲ್ಡ್ ಪರೀಕ್ಷಿತ್ ಕರ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಅ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ಬಾಯ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ನೈನ್ ಉಪವರ್ಣಿತ ಏತದ್ ವಹ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಪರೀಕ್ಷಿತ ಮಯ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಕಥಾ ಉಪೇತ ಆಖ್ಯಾನ ಯತ್ ಅಪೃಚ್ಛತ ಉಪವರ್ಣಿತ ಏತದ್ ವಹ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಪರೀಕ್ಷಿತ ಮಯ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಕಥೋಪೇತ ಆಖ್ಯಾನ ಯದ್ ಅಪೃಚ್ಛತ ಉಪವರ್ಣಿತ ಏತದ್ ವಹ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಪರೀಕ್ಷಿತ ಮಯ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಕಥೋಪೇತ ಆಖ್ಯಾನ ಯದ್ ಅಪೃಚ್ಛತ ಉಪವರ್ಣಿತ ಏತದ್ ವಹ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಪರೀಕ್ಷಿತ ಮಯ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಕಥೋಪೇತ ಆಖ್ಯಾನ ಯದ್ ಅಪೃಚ್ಛತ
Pavarnitam. Almost everything described. Etad. All these. Vaha. Unto you. Punyam. Pious. Parikshitam. About Maharaj Parikshit. Maya. By me. Vasudeva. Of Lord Krishna. Katha. Narrations. Upetam. In connection with. Akhyanam. Statements. Yat. What. Aprichata. You asked from me. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. O sages, as you did ask me, now I have described almost everything regarding the narrations about Lord Krishna in connection with the history of pious Maharaj Parikshit. Purport. Srimad Bhagavatam is the history of the activities of the Lord and the activities of the Lord are performed in relation with the devotees of the Lord. Therefore, the history of the devotees is non-different from the history of Lord Krishna's activities. A devotee of the Lord regards both the activities of the Lord and those of his pure devotees on an equal level, for they are all transcendental. Jai Shila Prabhupada Ki. So this is a beautiful section from the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam describing the glories of the Vaishnav devotees of the Lord. Tadeva Ramyam Ruchiram Navam Navam Tadeva Shashvan Manaso Mahutsavam Tadeva Shokar Navashoshanam Dranam Yaduttama Shloka Yasho Nogiyate The Lord's activities are enchanting and attractive to the mind. With every moment, the taste for those activities grows further. It is ever fresh, ever new. One can never become satiated. And thus, Lord Krishna's activities in relation with his devotees is all attractive. Leela Premna Priyadhikyam Madhuryam Venurupa Yoho Ityasadharanam Proktam Govindasya Chatushtayam Lord Krishna personally has four qualities which are more than even Narayana. First is his beauty, second is his enchanting flute playing. And third is his Madhuryam Venu Rupayoho, his reciprocation with his devotees. So that is something which is very unique. And fourth is his uncommon Leelas and pastimes in Vrindavan. Iti asadharanam proktam govindasya chatushtayam. Therefore, Srimad Bhagavatam is the history of narrations of the Lord's pastimes in relation with his devotees. Krishna explains to Arjuna in the Gita that my devotee is very dear to me. Krishna repeatedly says 
that my devotee is the most dear to me compared to all other kinds of transcendentalists. Bhakto si me sakha cheti rahasyam yetad uttamam. But how those devotees are intimate with the Lord? Why the Lord has such a deep feeling and love for his devotees? That is described in great detail in Srimad Bhagavatam. What does it actually mean to say that the devotee loves the Lord? Is it that the Lord fulfills each and every item, whatever the devotee asks for? All the prayers are fulfilled. That's why the devotee feels a strong faith in Krishna. Or we have the example here of Maharaj Parikshit. Maharaj Parikshit is cursed to die in seven days and seven nights. How would you understand this? How can you say that such a person is dear to the Lord? Why would the Lord do something like this to someone who is dear? Therefore, we have to understand that the Lord loves his devotees and does whatever is required to enhance the relationship and deepen the relationship and intensify the relationship of the devotee with him. The Lord is the ever well-wisher of his devotee. So let us discuss some of these qualities. What attracts Krishna to his devotees? The first quality is the integrity and the loyalty of his devotees. Kim du saham no sadhu nam vidusham kim apekshitam kim makaryam kadaryanam dushyajam tam dhritatmanam Vasudev and Devaki are being driven by Kamsa on his chariot. It is the day of Vasudev and Devaki's wedding. At some point, they hear the Akashwani. And the Akashwani says, You foolish Kamsa, you don't know that the eighth son of Devaki is going to become the cause of your death. Kamsa's feeling towards Devaki instantly changes. Kamsa picks up a sword in his right hand with his left hand holds Devaki's hair and raises the powerful dangling sword above his head which is as sharp as a razor. Kamsa has the power of 10,000 elephants in his arms and the next moment the sword will come down. So Kamsa has only one moment to do this. When one is faced with a situation where one just doesn't seem to have an equal match and opportunity, one becomes hopeless. Vasudevji did not have any arms. Vasudevji did not have any powerful weapons. Vasudevji did not have political power. Vasudevji did not have any armies with him. All Vasudev had was that one moment. When faced with such an opponent, when faced with such a situation which is so negative, the natural thing to happen in a conditioned soul is give up hope. But Vasudevji remained hopeful. Vasudevji realized that I may not have assets, I may not have facilities, but I have hope. And all I have at my disposal is the opportunity to try to serve. So in that one moment, as Kansa was about to bring that sword down, Vasudev started 
preaching to come, sir. It is the eighth the son of Devaki who is going to be the cause of your death. Not Devaki herself. And then Kamsa started hearing Vasudev. So Vasudev had one of the most challenging Bhagavatam classes to give. <laughs> because if he did not make one point right, the cost was too heavy. None of us can manage to give class like that. <laughs> the sword is right there. And Kamsa has to choose every word carefully. And if Vasudeva speaks a wrong word, he doesn't know which way the sword will go. <laughs> Kamsa may first maybe kill Vasudeva only. And then Devaki. You never know. An angry person with a sword in his hand you can't predict what's going to happen. But Vasudev continued to drive home this point that Kamsa, the soul is eternal. And Kamsa heard this entire description and he was trying to make sense out of it. And finally, Vasudevji made an offer. And he said, you have fear from the eighth son. I will come and give each and every son to you. My own son I will give so that you can kill. At that time, Shukadeva Goswami who is speaking this Srimad Bhagavatam is overwhelmed with emotion. To what extent? A devotee can be so tolerant, so dependent, and so detached. Kim du saham nu sadhu naam, vidusham kim apekshitam, kim akaryam kadaryanam, dustyajam tamdratatmanam. Kamsa hears this offer of Vasudeva. Kamsa considers all the factors carefully. But Kamsa has faith in Vasudev's character. And Kamsa agrees. And he says, okay, I will allow this. And so here is an example of Vasudev who had such integrity in his character that as soon as the son was born, he brought him in front of Kamsa. Kamsa's heart melted and Kamsa looked at Vasudev and said, no better you take him back. I have problem from the eighth son. When this happened, demigods were getting bewildered because demigods wanted Kamsa to act with atrocity because even previously when Kamsa was riding on the chariot serving Krishna, uh, serving Vasudev and Devaki, the demigods were in anxiety. That Vasudev and Devaki are the father and mother of Krishna. And if Kamsa continues to serve them so well, Krishna may put Kamsa in the category of Sevak. <laughs> Vaishnav Sevak. And once Krishna puts somebody in that category, Name Bhakta Pranashyati. So Krishna will refuse to kill. So this is not good. We have to make sure that he is provoked. So now, when Kamsa decides, no, no, you take away this son, again demigods are bewildered. And they send Narad Muni. Narad Muni brings a lotus and looks at Kamsa and says, Kamsa, I have a quiz for you. Kamsa says, what is that? Narad Muni says, which is the first petal, which is the eighth petal? <laughs> so Kamsa starts counting, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Narad Muni turns it and he says, now count. So Kamsa gets bewildered, what do you want to say? Narad Muni says, 
Nowadays, you cannot even believe somebody who says something on your face and you have so much faith on an Akashwani that eighth son means eighth son? Is there a binding contract? <laughs> if the first son turns out to be the killer, what you will do? Will you tell him? No, no, no. Send the eighth one. You can't trust anybody in this world. What to speak of an unknown Akashwani? How can you be so foolish? Kamsa looks at Naram and says, You are my savior. <laughs> and he goes running to the jail, catches hold of that small boy, just born, one day old, picks him up in his arms and smashes that child against the rock and fountain of blood splashes on the body of Vasudev and Devaki. And this is what Vasudev and Devaki had to go through, not once, but six times. So when Krishna is born, Vasudev is glorified. Ta Krishna vahe Vasudeva agate Swayam Vyavartanta Yatha Tamurave. Vasudev is glorified as one who is Shauri. Tatascha Shauri Bhagavat Prachodita Sutam Samadayacha Sutika Grihat. Shauri means brave. Why was Vasudev brave? Bravery does not mean defeating somebody in battle with weapons. Bravery does not mean establishing one's position through political means. Bravery does not mean speaking in a way which conveys some kind of feeling of valor. As per the Srimad Bhagavatam, the real understanding of bravery is in spite of losing money, position, fame, reputation, influence, in spite of loss of all of this, one refuses to give up hope and one continues to remain hopeful. So therefore, Vasudev is therefore glorified as Shauri or brave because he continued to be hopeful. He continued to remain ever believing that if I tolerate this and I remain true to my word, I have given my word, I have to give the child. He was not calculating, I have given the word, but let me see how can I escape. How can both Devaki and me escape with the children? No. So that is the integrity of Vasudevji. That's very uh, beautiful and important point. I remember when I was, you know, 1998, we did the first Janmashtami in IIT campus in Mumbai. And after the lecture, one student came to me and said, in your lecture you said, you know, the eighth son is going to be the cause of death for Kamsa. If eighth son was going to be the cause, Kamsa should have put Vasudev in one jail, Devaki in another jail. <laughs> Not even one child would have been born. And then he said, Kamsa ko itna bhi idea chamka nahi kya. <laughs> and I said, Kya kare comes IIT nahi gaya tha. In the practice of bhakti, we come to the stage where we take vows to follow the process seriously. And that's what in Gadadhar Pandit episode in Madhulila, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tells Gadadhar Pandit, go back. 
प्रतिज्ञा सेवा छाड़िबे ए तुम्हार उद्देश a devotee has only two assets his vows and his service pratigya and seva and to be able to perform his seva properly and to fulfill the pratigya properly one needs integrity and so krishna very much appreciates a devotee who follows his vows strictly strict following of vows is very important and so shila prabhupad he had given initiation and there was this devotee after getting the brahman initiation he was the head pujari so usually he would chant his 16 rounds that particular day he had not chanted his rounds he thought i will chant rounds after putting dt's to rest at night so he put the dt's to rest at 8:30 after putting dt's to rest he brought all the mahaprasad which was offered because as you know krishna is woken up at 4 o'clock in the morning in his con temples and is woken up with six to seven varieties of sweets rasgulla rasmalai sandesh barfi peda sweet rice <laughs> but today is ekadashi <laughs> but krishna can have so only he can honor like this at 4 o'clock in the morning and then all through the day six offering six aartis and then at night also he is offered some nice sweets before he goes to bed so we should not think we are offering so that we can have all these are being prepared and offered by yashoda mai to krishna by radharani to krishna and then after putting the lord to rest he came out with the mahaprasad sweets and some other mahaprasad was there so some of the other devotee friends of his came to him and said you have served very hard all day let us sit and have this mahaprasad together if you divide and share and eat together our relationship will increase so he sat and started eating and then as they started eating they started talking and it became late and he thought oh four rounds remaining i'll do tomorrow he went to sleep next day prabhupad was giving class and after class prabhupad was walking up to him and he was giving some mahaprasad to prabhupad and prabhupad looked at him and said have you chanted your rounds are you chanting your 16 rounds and he got totally bewildered that he said are this is prabhupad or parmatma <laughs> one day i did not chant next day is asking what is this is there a cctv or something is <laughs> totally bewildered he says yes prabhupad i chant every i chant regularly so prabhupad said every day <laughs> says yesterday was the only day i missed four rounds but i'll make it up tomorrow prabhupad said you have to chant 16 rounds daily and then prabhupad said see krishna is there to protect you but just like a child is going out in the market the father is there the child feels confident the father will protect me but 
there has to be a connection between the child and the father. So the father puts his finger and the child holds on to that finger. The child is small, he cannot walk properly, he cannot walk straight, he can even, you know, fall down. He misses a step. Sometimes he stumbles. But even if the child stumbles, what prevents him from falling? The father's hand, which he is holding. And when he holds the father's hand, the father also holds him. That prevents him from falling. So Prabhupada said, if you are holding Krishna's hand, Krishna will hold your hand. Even if you stumble, you will not fall. And Prabhupada said, chanting the 16 rounds daily is holding on to Krishna's hand. So therefore, when we come to this process, anyone who comes new to Krishna consciousness, he is immediately inspired by the fresh wave of the Hladini potency and a certain kind of joy overwhelms us, chanting, dancing, and the best part is after dancing, feasting. <laughs> Chant Hare Krishna and be happy. And then we say, what do I have to do to be part of ISKCON? Chant 16 rounds and follow four principles. And many times in the height of ecstasy of being a brand new devotee, people ask, Bus, <laughs> only this much, nothing else. No. Bus. <laughs> In due course of time, you realize, oh my God, this is, 16 looks like 160. <laughs> Can they edit from 4 to 2? Is adjustment possible? So therefore, in the long run, to practice this integrity is very important. We have the example of Bali Maharaj. When Vamanadev came in front of Bali Maharaj, Bali Maharaj said, what do you want? Ask. And Vamanadev says, three steps of land. Bali Maharaj says, take it. Shukrachar says, stop. Are he is Vishnu. He will take away everything. And then we sh Shukracharya, but Bali Maharaj said, I have already given my word. Shukracharya says, then he quotes a verse. And he says, according to this verse, there are eight conditions in which, as per scripture, lying is bona fide. It is there in the Bhagavatam. I won't quote now. This is perfectly bona fide to lie in these conditions and this particular condition you are going through is known as prana sankate. When there is prana sankat, you can lie. So Bali Maharaj starts contemplating. And then Bali Maharaj starts thinking, Balir eva grahapatir Bhashita. And he starts contemplating. Toshnim Babhuva. He becomes quiet. Contemplates. What Shukracharya had spoken earlier when he was giving lessons to me was yes. Yajna means Vishnu. And now he is contradicting. So there is some problem. He had always taught when you make a vow, Fulfill it as per the scriptural integrity. Now he is saying, don't follow the vow. What is going on? Gurur eva avaliptasya 
कार्या कार्यम अजानतों उत्पाद प्रतिपन्नस्य परित्यागो विधीयते and then he says if the guru seems to be speaking something which is contradicting to what he is doing a disciple is allowed to reject such a guru this is a quote from mahabharat by shrila jeev goswami in his commentary on shrimad bhagavatam tika so therefore श्रीमत भागवत अर्थानाम आस्वाद रसिक सह स्वजातीय आशे स्निग्धे साधु संग स्वतोवरे श्रीमद भागवत कैन ओनली बी अंडरस्टूड इन द एसोसिएशन ऑफ डिवोटीज द ग्लोरीज ऑफ द डिवोटीज कैन ओनली बी अंडरस्टूड इन द एसोसिएशन ऑफ डिवोटीज सजाति आशये स्निग्धे साधु संग स्वतोवरे इन द एसोसिएशन ऑफ डिबोटीज हु आर एल्डर टू अस सीनियर टू अस मोर एडवांस टू अस हैव मोर रियलाइजेशन देन अस बाय सर्विंग देम बाय हियरिंग फ्रॉम देम एंड सो बलि महाराज ऑल दो बॉर्न इन अ डीमन फैमिली टेक्निकली अ डीमन but he develops faith that i must surrender to vamanadev he gives his word with one feet which is raised vamanadev covers the entire universe with the other second step he covers practically all of the skies and the ether and then he says to bali maharaj what do i do with the third step bali maharaj you have made a promise that you will give me three steps only two steps are over what about the third step and at that time bali maharaj immediately offers his head in surrender he says all my property is gone but the owner is still there and therefore i offer myself to you and then bali maharaj speaks a beautiful verse and he says pumsam shlagya tamam manye dandam arhat tamar pitam yamna mata pita brata suhurdas cha dishanti hi bali maharaj says my dear lord vishnu you are known as the supreme personality of godhead you have always been known as the supreme personality of compassion you are the supreme personality of love you are the supreme personality of all benedictions all of these have been seen in the past but through my example you are revealing to the whole world for all time to come that lord vishnu lord krishna is a supreme personality of punishment nobody in history has ever been punished like this the way you are punishing me he is not speaking it in anger he is not having like you know angry eyes while speaking this he is speaking with affection and love yam na mata pita bhrata suhrdas cha dishanti hi no master has ever punished his dependent whether it is father mother master or anyone else the way you have punished me and he puts forward an interesting paradigm what would be your choice in these two scenarios if a materialist offers you a reward with one hand and lord krishna offers you a punishment with another which one would a devotee choose 
a materialist's reward or Krishna's punishment? Hmm? <laughs> a materialist's reward or Krishna's punishment? Which one will you choose? Be careful, Krishna is hearing. As per our tattva, we know I am supposed to choose Krishna's punishment. But it is too scary to express that. Right? We may say little of both. <laughs> so that I can use the reward in your service. So, Bali Maharaj's pastime is revealing the highest standards of the Srimad Bhagavatam. That here is a person who prefers Krishna's punishment over any material reward. That's the standard. That's why the devotee is dear to Krishna. That is uncompromising in his relationship with me. And therefore, punishment by the Supreme Lord is accepted by the devotee as the Lord's mercy. So, you know, this is something which is really powerful. And uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally appeared to demonstrate that in all circumstances we aspire for his service whether in prosperity or adversity chaudi ke te sab lok bole hari hari prem veshe madhye nritya kare gaur hari lord chaitanya mahaprabhu inaugurated the Harinam Sankirtan in Alarnath. And people surrounded Lord Chaitanya as they saw Mahaprabhu demonstrate his bliss and his beauty. Keha nache keha gaye Sri Krishna Gopal Premete bhasila loka stri vridha abal and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu encouraged and inspired everyone to chant the names of Krishna and Gopal, irrespective of social status. Dekhinityananda Prabhu kohe bhakta gane, Eirupe nritya age, hobe grame grame. And Nityananda Prabhu at that time saw this amazing Harinam and said, this Sankirtan, where each and every person is crying out loudly the holy names, asking and aspiring for that service in every situation, will be seen in every town and village across the world. And so Nityananda Prabhu made a prediction of Srila Prabhupada establishing Krishna consciousness movement all over the world. So what does this Hare Krishna Mahamantra actually mean? It basically means, please engage me in your service in all situations of prosperity or adversity. That is the power of the Harinam Sankirtan. Please engage me in your seva. And that's why, leaving aside all other prayers, each one may have so many different prayers in their mind. Millions of unique desires we carry. But when the Kirtan begins, we decide to keep aside all those prayers. We sacrifice those prayers, we sacrifice those thoughts and bring only one prayer to the foreground of our mind. O Sri Sri Radha Gopinath, please engage me in your service. That's why it is sacrifice, yagya. 
that's how we are united when this air conditioning of the temple hall was happening way back in 2006 7 the company had to give some assurance on the quality and so part of the contract in the deal was we will only make full payment when you are able to showcase a temperature of 24 degrees 25 degrees at all times and then we had added including kirtan they couldn't figure out the power of kirtan and they said no problem yeah yeah contract was signed air conditioning was executed and then they would test on the day it was executed during lecture it was perfect they showed to our devotee who was in maintenance see working and working then maharaj started the last kirtan and you know when he would do his last kirtan the roof explodes <laughs> so as soon as that last kirtan began zoom it went beyond 26 so our devotee said sorry contract not fulfilled <laughs> so some part of the payment we reserved we did not make payment one year two year three year and this was a regular exercise their person would come they made further adjustments in all their system and everything but the kirtan would always defeat the ac because kirtan is blessed by ac bhakti vedanta swami <laughs> and finally after 4 years one of the topmost managers in the company he came to me and said baba galti ho gaya <laughs> please release the remaining amount and otherwise you know it will be embarrassing for us and this and that and so finally said okay they have surrendered to the kirtan <laughs> <laughs> so therefore lord chaitanya mahaprabhu has established that sankirtan which basically means in spite of multiple unique differences which we may have when we step into the temple when we come in front of the deities when we start offering our prayer we sacrifice all those other unique desires and then we all together in unison express one desire please engage me in your service kuladhi devata more madan mohan जार सेवक रघुनाथ रूप सनातन कविराज गोस्वामी से माई फैमिली डी टी इज मदन मोहन एंड वाई दे आर माई फैमिली डी टी इज बिकॉज दे हैव बीन सर्व बाय माई मास्टर्स रूप एंड सनातन श्री रूप रघुनाथ चरणेर एब जार स्मृते सिद्ध होए वांछित सकल एंड देयर इज सो मच पावर इन द लोटस फीट द डस्ट ऑफ द लोटस फीट ऑफ रूप एंड रघुनाथ दैट जस्ट बाय एस्पायरिंग टू सर्व देम ऑल ऑफ माय स्पिरिचुअल डिजायर्स आर फुलफिल्ड सो अ डिवोटी मे नॉट हैव टू मेनी एसेट्स but the entire process of krishna consciousness is not to train us in accumulating assets the process of krishna consciousness is meant to train us in developing the right attitude the attitude of being dependent on krishna through his devotees and that's basically the whole practice of krishna consciousness because 
enthusiasm minus patience gives rise to the tendency to control and patience minus enthusiasm may result in complacency but the practice of krishna consciousness is neither based on impatience tendency to control or complacency but we are always eager to serve krishna and his devotees in all situations so that's you know the whole idea of why the devotees are totally dependent on the lord in all situations the devotees are always tolerant in all situations they are willing to accept all difficulties all challenges in all situations ei bakke sakshi mora ache mahajan jar vakya satya kori mane tribhuvan in the past time of sakshi gopal when that young brahman is asked did the old brahman make a promise who was sakshi who was witness he says there was only one witness lord gopal lord gopal was the witness and this was a wow promise made by the old brahman in front of gopal so all the villagers said but how how will it make a difference how can this help our situation because if gopal was the witness i don't think we can help in this situation so he says in this verse ei bakke sakshi mora ache mahajan gopal is not ordinary he is the witness of everything and everyone jar bakke satya kori mane tribhuvan yes the older brahman may have education yes the older brahman may have wealth yes the older brahman may be from a higher echelon in society yes the older brahman may be more influential yes i may not have any of the assets with the older brahman has but yam labdhwa cha param labham manyate nadikam tata the greatest attainment is not to have janma aishwarya shruta shri the greatest attainment in life is to have the favor and the grace and the kripa of krishna and so i have these three assets the brahman says the younger brahmana says what are the three assets which every aspiring devotee must strive for first the belief that krishna is the topmost authority second accept krishna's words without hesitation third to have firm faith in krishna's consistency to have belief that krishna is the topmost authority a couple got married very young and they came to shila prabhu pad for blessings the girl was hardly 8 19 years old 20 years old and she had got married to this devotee and when they came to shila prabhu pad prabhu pad asked them ask this girl who do you love more krishna or your husband and the girl started crying prabhupad was bewildered eh? did i say something wrong and then prabhupad said why are you crying and she said neither <laughs> and then she said i just got introduced to krishna consciousness so i don't know much about krishna and i have just been introduced you know to my husband and therefore i have to be honest so that is the process of sadhana bhakti that yes we may not have belief that krishna is the topmost authority but we begin the process we begin the process that yes somehow 
let me start putting faith right one professor asked shila prabhupad you are recommending to everybody in america to do chanting but the professor said but actually the impact on the mind happens by consistent repetition of any word any syllable so why chanting i believe that if i simply repeat counting that will also have the same effect so I, rather than hare krishna i would say 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 what do you say swami ji <laughs> prabhupa said you continue counting and when you are tired of counting start chanting So therefore, we are not in a process of just controlling the mind like a mystic yogi. The chanting is a process of aspiring for service. We are aspiring for service. And that service is something which we are really attached to. Prabhupada was on a morning walk in Kumbh Mela. And then Srila Prabhupada turned around and said, Why is Krishna the Supreme Personality of Godhead? One devotee said, Srila Prabhupada, because Gita says so. Prabhupada says, Gita is only a book. Another devotee said, But Prabhupada, you are saying so. Prabhupada, I am an old man. I can say many things. Then everybody kept quiet. Prabhupada said, because when you chant Hare Krishna, you experience transformation. That's why. Two years later, Prabhupada was at another morning walk in America. Again in that walk, he said, Why is Krishna the Supreme Personality of God? One devotee was in that morning walk. <laughs> he thought, I know the answer. And if I speak it, I will get respected in the midst of all the other God brothers. Bhav badega. <laughs> Immediately said, Prabhupada, because when you chant Hare Krishna, you experience transformation. Prabhupada said, no, because Gita says so. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, that belief that Krishna is the topmost authority is based on accepting Krishna's words without hesitation. Accepting Krishna's words without hesitation. That is Shastra. And therefore His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada, spent sleepless nights writing the commentaries to the Srimad Bhagavatam. This first canto, first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, it was done by Srila Prabhupada between 1955 and 1965. This one book took 10 years. So naturally one may think, if one canto took 10 years, nine other cantos will take how many years? So in spiritual life, there are different mathematics because of Krishna's intervention. So Srila Prabhupada goes to America and then he gets support. You know, one devotee sees Srila Prabhupada struggling, struggling, struggling. And this devotee comes to Srila Prabhupada and says, I see that you are kind of, you know, doing your own typing. I'm a speed typist. So if you give me you know, some of your manuscripts, I can type faster. Prabhupada gave him, okay, take this. He went, came back next day, all typed, all done, which would have taken Prabhupada a few days. Prabhupada said, oh, done? He said, yes. If you have more, you can give me. Prabhupada took him inside the room. There was a huge trunk. <laughs> Prabhupada opened it. And this devotee saw this and said, oh, Swamiji, this is a lifetime of typing. <laughs> Prabhupada said, no, several lifetimes. 
And then Prabhupada was, you know, still through these devotees, he was typing and everything. And one disciple asked, how can we assist you? How can we serve you as a disciple? Prabhupada said, you can serve me by assisting me in my service. When Giriraj Maharaj asked Srila Prabhupada, what is the duty of the guru and what is the duty of the disciple? Prabhupada said, duty of the guru is to serve Krishna. Duty of the disciple is to assist the guru in his service to Krishna. Then Giriraj Maharaj asked Srila Prabhupada, what is the meaning of a sincere disciple? And Prabhupada said, sincere disciple means one who serves and fulfills and follows all the instructions of the Guru and the Vaishnavas, big and small. And so one devotee, after hearing this from Srila Prabhupada, was walking on the street and he was thinking, how can I assist Prabhupada? And then he saw this dictaphone. It was in an electronic shop. And then he went inside and he thought this will be useful so that Prabhupada can dictate. So he went inside and he started negotiating. He struck the deal, purchased and he spent half an hour to 45 minutes understanding how it works. Because he has to explain it to Prabhupada. So he took it and showed it to Prabhupada. And keeping it in front of Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, this will assist you in speeding up the translation of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Prabhupada said, thank you very much. He says, now I will show you how this works. Prabhupada said, no, I know how it works. And Prabhupada started moving the switches, this, that. He dictated something, paused, rewind, played. His voice was there. And this devotee was shocked. He walked out totally humble and bewildered. He says, Prabhupada came straight from Vrindavan. And since the time he has landed in America, he has never seen a dictaphone. How does he know? And so, another disciple, Srila Prabhupada said, I did not want to come to the material world. Krishna told me, you have to go to fulfill the mission of writing all these commentaries in the English language to present it to the whole world. And another disciple of Prabhupada in his Vyas Puja offering shared that, you know, yes, there was colonization all over the world. And there are so many negative aspects to that. But one positive aspect was because of that, English language became spread all over the world. Just so that when the Bhagavatam is published and the Gita is published in English, everybody can at once understand Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam. So Srila Prabhupada, at that time, then decided to actually establish, because he, he started, you know, negotiating with Dai Nippon. The way Prabhupada was printing and publishing books was fascinating. Dai Nippon was one of the largest companies in Japan, and Prabhupada just went and started negotiating with them with no money. But he just convinced them on giving him on credit. And they accepted it. And from that, the publishing journey began. And after Dai Nippon, then the Macmillan, and then finally, Srila Prabhupada's Gita was not being published. And Srila Prabhupada was asking Brahmanand Prabhu again and again, please try to publish this. 11 to 12 publishers rejected the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Then finally there was a request, a mail, which came from Macmillan. And they, somebody wanted a tape of the Hare Krishna Kirtan. Brahman and Prabhu came running to Prabhupada and said, Prabhupada from Macmillan, there is a request for a tape. What should we do? Prabhupada said, you personally go and hand deliver that tape. Because you may find somebody who is interested to publish our Gita. Then Brahmanand Prabhu said, Should I take the manuscript of the Gita with me? Prabhupada said, No. Just tell them, This is complete Gita in English, published by, uh, translated by Indian Swami. 
that's it. Prabhupada said, yes, enough, you go. And he went, and then he went to that office, and that office was of a clerk at the lower levels of the hierarchy who had no influence over printing and publishing. And Brahmananda was feeling disappointed. Suddenly the door opened. And the clerk introduced this gentleman who walked in and he said, this is Mr. James Wade. And he's the head of the religious publishing division. Brahmananda's ears went up. Oh, here is the man. Immediately he said, I have got the Bhagavad Gita. James Wade said, in English? He said, yes. By an Indian Swami? Yes. Complete? Yes. Bring it, I will publish it. Brahmanand Prabhu said, but uh, don't you want to see the manuscript? He says, no. Because we have all the other literatures available in other religions. In Hinduism, Gita is missing. We want to publish. Brahmanand Prabhu went running to Prabhupada. And as he was running to Srila Prabhupada, he was thinking all the different images. What would be Prabhupada's reaction? He would jump up. He would dance. Or he would embrace me. Or he would glorify me, or he would do this or do that. He just couldn't imagine what would be Prabhupada's response. As soon as he came, he said, Prabhupada, Macmillan has agreed to publish it. Prabhupada had the manuscript in front of him. Prabhupada said, Take it. And Prabhupada continued working. And Brahman was shocked. He says, Only this much? <laughs> Take it? No reaction? No response, no symptoms of ecstasy, no demonstration of any pleasure. Then he realized that Srila Prabhupada had full conviction that all he has to do is to follow the instruction of Srila Saraswati Thakur. And that is the greatest asset he has. And if he just follows that instruction, everything else will automatically manifest. Therefore, accepting Krishna's words without hesitation and to have firm faith in Krishna's consistency. Yudhishthir Maharaj told Krishna, my dear Lord, in future, when generations of devotees hear about what Pandavas had to go through in life, they may lose faith in your bhakti. And Bhishma Dev says, Yatra dharma suto raja gada panir brukodara krishno stri gandibam chapam suhurta krishna stato vipat What a family the Pandavas had. Yudhishthir is dharma personified, Bhima is power personified, Arjuna is skill personified, Nakul and Sahadev are loyalty personified, Krishna is well wisher personified. In spite of this, the Pandavas went through difficulty again and again. Because the will of the Lord is inconceivable. Therefore, do not try to understand Krishna's will. Just submit to his will with the faith that Krishna is all good and Krishna is our ever well-wisher. Before the battle of Kurukshetra, Duryodhan comes to Sahadev. So Sahadev has lots of mystic powers including Powerful idea of astrology. So Duryodhan asks Sahadev, please tell us, what is the way by which we can be victorious? Kauravas can be victorious. And Sahadev says, on Amava's day, whoever does the Kalabali Yagya will be victorious. So this conversation can't be imagined in Kali Yuga. That Kaurava head is coming and asking, how can we win? Tell us. And Pandava person is saying, this is the way. Do it. So someone may think that, Aray, Sanadev is illogical, is ridiculous like this. But that time the culture was like that. 
And as soon as Sahadev revealed this, the person in greatest anxiety was Krishna. Krishna was hitting his head. Again and again the Pandavas keep blundering. So Krishna immediately called various Pandits, sat on the bank of river Yamuna and started doing Pitri Tarpan. Tarpan for the forefathers. So the, the Pandits started talking to each other. Amavas is tomorrow. Why is Krishna doing Tarpan today? Another Pandit said, he is Krishna. He can do anything. Don't ask too many questions. <laughs> Another Pandit said, Amavas today or tomorrow. Anyway, Dakshina we will get. <laughs> so Krishna may have some plan. We don't know. Just go along. So two people were most bewildered. Surya and Chandra. From the top, they were watching this. Surya asked Chandra, when is Amavas? <laughs> Chandra said, as per my calculation, it is tomorrow. Surya said, why is Krishna doing this? Chandra said, maybe his calendar is not updated. <laughs> that means he may be making some mistake. We don't know there is some communication problem. Let us go and at least express that there is some difficulty we see. Surya and Chandra came down, told the Lord, my dear Lord, we want to speak something. Krishna said, please speak. He says, no, no, in private. <laughs> because they thought, you know, how can we give feedback in front of everybody that you have made a mistake. So Krishna came to the corner and Surya and Chandra said to the Lord, my dear Lord, you are doing tarpan for the Pitris, but Amavas is tomorrow, not today. And Krishna said, what is Amavas? When Surya and Chandra are standing in straight line, that is Amavas. Now, today it is Amavas. <laughs> and Krishna, he immediately called the Pandavas, made them sit down and did the Kalabali Yagya. Duryodhan was doing as per calendar <laughs> next day, but he did not know that Krishna had already done match fixing. <laughs> Krishna had intervened to support the Pandavas. So sometimes you will see Krishna is supporting, Krishna is helping, relieving the Pandavas and then you see Abhimanyu gets killed and then the Draupadi's sleeping sons get killed and you may wonder what is going on? Krishna is on whose side? So Krishna is sharing with us his main lesson. Don't be concerned with prosperity and adversity in this world. Don't pray to increase your prosperity and diminish and minimize your adversity. Just focus on one question. How can I serve you and please you in the midst of all prosperities and adversities. That's the example going to be demonstrated by Maharaj Parikshit. The example of integrity and loyalty to vows taken in front of Krishna. That in all situations, I will continue to serve you and please you. Such a person is therefore known as the follower of Bhagavan or the Bhagavata. And such Bhagavatas are very, very dear to the Lord. Yaha sarva laukaika mano biruchya Saubhagya bho kachit akrishta pachya Yatraya maro panatulya kala Saprema sakhi phalavan atulya Srila Raghunath Das Goswami was such a devotee that he served the Vaishnavas in all circumstances, all situations with so much diligence, so much sincerity that the Vaishnavas blessed him. And because of the profuse rainfall of the blessings of the Vaishnavas, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami's heart became a fertile ground that as soon as the Bhaktilata beach fell there, it turned out into a beautiful tree and immediately gave the sweet, fresh, 
luscious fruits of prema. That's what a devotee is expected to do, to be a servant of the servant of the servant in all situations. And for such a devotee, the opportunity to serve Vaishnavas is the greatest prosperity. And to be away from the association of devotees and losing opportunity to serve the Vaishnavas is the greatest adversity. And the only thing such devotees pray is let me always be in the Vaishnav Satsanga and let me always be a servant of the Vaishnavas. Vaishnavera gunagrahi no de khaedosh koe mane vakke kore Vaishnava santosh let me not see the faults of the Vaishnavas. Let me always try to sincerely serve the Vaishnavas. Because of this attitude, the Vaishnav Bhagavat devotees of Bhagavan are always very dear to Bhagavan. And that's what is the main theme of today's verse and purport, revealed by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna.